Hello. How are you guys doing? Thanks very much for coming out. I really appreciate it. So uh, my name is Marty. I play in a band with myself called Anna's Anchor. And uh, this summer I went on a big, mad, questionably stupid adventure called the Islands where over eight weeks each weekend I went to a different island. Um, I played a gig on each island, then I wrote a song out on each one, and then I came home, wrote, record, and released a song each week. So it was eight weeks, eight gigs, eight islands, and eight songs. And uh, a lot of the, the time on the whole adventure, I was kind of, I was either out on my own or with my friend Oscar here. And uh, all the while, everyone was supporting me back at home, so I wanted to kind of have a night where I could share the whole thing together. So I really want to thank you all for coming out. Uh, could you all give a quick round of applause for the winter passing as well there? Yeah. 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 Also, before we start, I want to say as well, I want to thank the Stormy Teacup. They are actually closing down tomorrow, sadly enough. So um, I know everyone's been really quiet and polite, but feel free to be noisy and go up and, and, and pick up a nice tea or coffee before, before it's too late. So, uh, this big adventure began out in Bear Island. And um, the very first thing I think I noticed out on the island was that everyone was extremely proud of where they're from. Um, and I suppose sometimes, particularly now, I just finished college and a lot of people move off and I think at times they kind of sometimes lose their sense of pride in Limerick. And I am so proud to be from Limerick that like we can put on cool things like this. So uh, it's kind of an interesting contrast. So that's what I wrote the song about. Also, another funny thing that happened out on Bear Island was um, I sold the most amount of merch that I have ever sold to one person. <laughs> it was this quite drunk, rich yacht owner who... <laughs> I'm pretty sure he played for the other side, not that that really matters anyway. But uh, he, he came up to me and said, Do you sell any CDs? Said, of course I'll sell you CDs, why I'm here. And um, he gave me 50 euro, and I said, well, I only had 30 euro change at the time. And I was like, oh, just give me a second, I'll go up to the bar and get you your change. He was like, no, I'm giving you the 50 euro. <laughs> I said, there's no way I'm selling you a CD that costs 5 euro for 50 euro. He's like, well, how many CDs do you have? <laughs> so needless to say, he stumbled back to his yacht with 10 CDs, a t-shirt, and a tote bag. <laughs> And this song is called Lawrence. <laughs> Places as much a part of you as it is me. The only difference is you never found community. Every time someone asks where you're from, you lose your identity. Hope you're happy living all alone in the big city. Take 
get everything you can grab Just remember where you're from next time you look down on us to take a stab Thank you very much! I always find it's kind of awkward when acoustic bands are playing, you never really know when the song's over and you're not sure when to clap. Because at least with a big loud rock band, you know, when the noise finishes, but everyone's always trying to be so polite that they don't want to like spoil or interrupt the end of the song. The next island that I went out to was Inish Moor. And um, one thing that I kind of found out on all the islands is as soon as the last ferry leaves, there's this kind of weird feeling of Oh fuck, this, I'm out here and there, there is no going back, I'm out here. And um, out on Inishmore I watched the last one go by and I was thinking of um, a gentleman that I met during the day. Um, he owned the ferry and his name was Enda. And he was telling me about how his wife lives in Cork and they don't really get to see each other very much. And um, he was clearly very proud of his business and again, a kind of common theme in all the islands is them being extremely proud of where they're from. And um, I thought it was kind of sad that he couldn't meet, his wife couldn't see kind of his proudest moment. Um, so I wrote a song about that. And I couldn't really call it Enda because the last song was called Lawrence. I think people would be questioning what side I was playing for. So um, I thought St. Enda sounded cool and that has a limerick connection. So I googled St. Enda just to make sure I wasn't affiliating myself with some extremely dodgy patron saint. And it uh, turns out he's actually Saint Enda of Iron, and he built a monastery out on Inish Moor, so... Full circle. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this song is called Saint Enda. Shine so far from here. Every night I look out from the pier. There is a thousand people chewing. I spent a lifetime welcoming. You are the only one I wish the tides are bringing. And you would. So proud of everything that happened Well, you were not around And you would be so proud Of everything we built Our past the ship the right
change guitar real quick. Usually when you lay out a set, you usually pick the songs that are in the same tunings as each other because that's what makes sense, but that's not how I wrote the songs, so there's going to be a lot of to and fro with the guitars. But uh, the next island I went out to was Inish Turk, and me and my friend Oscar, as soon as we got up to where the ferry goes from, the little pier, we immediately looked at each other and were like, Phew. it was like an episode of Deadliest Catch out there. It was unbelievable. And uh, apparently, well, what you're supposed to do on a really rough ferry is to keep your eyes focused on the horizon. And uh, the opposite of what you should do is keep your eyes focused on one point because everything else around you is moving. And while you're on the way out to Inish Turk, um, there was the journal.ie published an article about the island, so that was huge for me. So, of course, I had to read that on my phone. And I was reading for about 20 minutes, and uh, I didn't want them to think, to think who is this soft city lad coming out to this island, but I didn't feel overly proud a few minutes later when my head was stuck over the side of the boat. <laughs> uh, Inish Turk was the island I was probably most worried about, too, because only 50 people live out there. So, 35 people in total came, so to put that in perspective, that would be like playing a gig in Limerick to about 100,000 people. So, it wasn't bad going. And, um, I'm the type of person that kind of fills up my day as much as possible and I want to get as much done as possible. And I couldn't really remember the last time I just sat down and did nothing. And uh, out on Inish Turk, we sat down at the lookout point for just, I think it was like five or six hours, but it felt like a few minutes, and I kind of don't usually allow myself that time, but it's something I guess we all kind of should do. So um, this song is about that, it's called Signal Tower. passing would agree from touring is that it's a good life lesson too is that you need to be nice to everybody you meet especially when you're on the road because you're almost completely relying <clears throat> on the good nature of people to get you by because you have nothing out there and uh, when you're on an island that only a handful of people live there and you see them every single day I think that is multiplied because anything you do is going to come back and uh, me and Oscar, we, were, we went to rent bicycles and <clears throat> it was about five o'clock by the time we got to the place where you rent the bikes and they're meant to be back by six. But we were just asking, you know, can we just hang on to them and give them back in the morning? It's the exact same thing and we'd have a few hours in the evening 
And the guy was saying, no way, you have to pay for two days. That's a two day rental. Like, Come on, there was literally nobody on the island. And uh, he was just not budging. He was just not going. He's like, no, that's two days. Like, we'll only get three hours use, right? They're gonna give you 20 euro. You can only buy a bicycle for that. And uh, well, probably not, to be honest. But. <laughs> But anyway, he eventually gave in and was like, right, feck off, here, take your bicycles. And uh, when we checked into the B&B, we hadn't actually met the owners. And uh, of course, when we got back later on with our bicycles, after a huge argument, who owned the B&B? Just your man who sold us the bicycles. Um, to be honest, that has absolutely nothing to do with the song. Um, it was a completely miserable weekend. It was probably the only weekend where at the where the where it was raining. So it was a miserable weekend, and I wrote a miserable song, and it's called "No Place for a Queen." <laughs> Quiet down the back there, please. <laughs> It's amazing how quiet are people when they don't have drink in them. If you had a few points now, it's like, ah, I want the bicycles. <laughs> have been changed and they both lived by the scene I have pictured you and me where I have pictured you and me to speak anything at all I will speak truth finally whenever you arrive I don't think that I will find person that you used to be, the person that you used to be, the person that you used to be. Dreamt every day, oh my flat ship, it will be as if this year Out to, I was about to say Inishir, but it's not, it's not, that's a lie. It was actually Cape Clear. 
Uh, I know if anyone's ever been out to Cape Clear, but probably the coolest thing that they have out there is a goat's farm where you can get goat's ice cream. It's kind of more like a sorbet though. It's kind of a bit of a gourbet, I guess. <laughs> I've been practicing that one all week. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Thank you. That's very funny. Thank you very much. My father, ladies and gentlemen. Andre, <laughs> my. Um, completely off track now. Lost my frame of thought. Um, Cape Clear was a bit of a lawless land. As soon as we got off the ferry. It, this guy um, picked us up that was dropping us out to the B&B and I'm not joking when I say on the car he had no front quarter panels, no rear quarter panels, no front or back bumper and no bonnet on the car. <laughs> so uh, clearly, <laughs> clearly there's no NCT out in this place anyway. It almost seemed like a badge of honor to take as much parts off your car as possible. <laughs> And uh, we were after I was out with my two friends from Clannacilty, and after we had played, um, we were in the pub until oh, it was bright by the time we were leaving anyway, and things were only getting started. And there were these art kinnery there from Irish College, and they're about 18 or 19. And I'll tell you, they're the reason why we left the bar anyway. I've never met such an annoying shower in my life. <laughs> they were basically trying to live live as if they were still 15 or 16, hanging out with all the, the Irish college students. And uh, like I said earlier on, I just finished college and there's, there's still a good few Van Wilders knocking around the place that just are not willing to let go. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I, there's a couple of them here tonight as well. <laughs> and uh, I guess there really comes a stage where you just kind of have to appreciate that, that time in your life and just kind of move on. And that's what this song's about. It's called Everyone's Deserving.
tell you what this next song is about because I don't think you'd like me if I did. So, I still want to be friends with all of you afterwards. So, uh, this is a song from Inishir called Plassy. <laughs> Dirty, <laughs> the ship was right, but I was too far inside to see if we'd make it out alive. The place where we tripped up those ideas we held with open hearts, but so naive. So many miles, and part of you grew up, but the rest was still a child. Back at the beach, like last time, today the sea is you will start from scratch. We are not friends, we were not cut from the same path. step into them from not being a local but uh, for this one we we're staying at this really fancy upmarket spa hotel funnily enough but it's the nature of touring you, you take what you get and uh, there was just trying to figure out what tune I meant to mean um, there was the, the manager of the hotel picked us up and he was probably just I thought from all the islanders, 
they're strange folk. They're brought up in different environments, they're different people. But the strangest person I met the entire time was actually a guy from Limerick who was just out there for the summer working in a hotel. And uh, he was a manager of the hotel. And he told me, the very first thing he said to me was that the, f the first thing he judges people on is the colour of their socks. I was kind of worried because mine were full of holes at the time. But uh, throughout the, the night we got talking to him and have you ever heard of a cray corn? Corn cray. Corn cray. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you didn't say it, no one knew what it was either way. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> The camera's off, it's alright. <laughs> there you go. So the corn crake, anyway, it's this bird that is almost extinct every place apart from Inish Boffin. And um, this, the owner of this hotel, he, he liked to use that term as a corn crake as to describe a lovely looking woman because they're hard to find. <laughs> he didn't tell us this initially, but we eventually copped it when uh, this woman walked past, I was being really loud, and he said, you see her? She's just a seagull. What you really want is a corn crake. <laughs> and he took out his phone and he said to me, do you want to see a picture of a corn crake? <laughs> and he turned around to me and it was just a black screen. He said, that's it, you're never going to find one. <laughs> um, well, funnily enough, I've yet to hit the I think almost the rite of passage where as a musician you play to literally nobody, I mean not one person, I've yet to do that. But the closest I've come to that was actually out on Inish Boffin. There was, there were a few people at the start, but for a finish there was only just two people, just this, this American couple. And uh, to be honest, the whole thing was coming to a close and I played in so many noisy bars that I was happy to almost play to a nice quiet place like here. And. Um, at one point, me and my father were playing a few songs um, because there was no one there, why not? And uh, at one point, the guy out of the American couple started crying and we didn't really know what was going on. And afterwards, he came up to us and he told us that, unfortunately, his son had passed away recently. And um, a lot of the songs that we sang kind of had personal momentum to, to them and their son. And it was almost kind of like a a state of mourning the whole gig and they said afterwards that they kind of genuinely felt better about the whole situation and they like they couldn't thank me more and uh, I think for a gig that I played to the smallest amount of people um, I think it was probably the most significant gig I've ever played um, the song I wrote was about their son and a friend of mine which I'm actually not going to play because it's actually impossible to play I would need four hands and two keyboards so it's not going to happen. So instead I'll play the, the song that kind of meant the most to them that I played and it's a cover by a band called Title Fight and it's called 27. Bring you back to life if I said your name 20. 
Seven times will I bring you back to Twenty-seven times Will that bring you back to life If I said your name Twenty-seven times Will that bring you back to life Thank you very much. The journey is almost over. We're at Valencia Island. The last out of all the eight. And uh, I was playing in a place called Chapel Town, and uh, <clears throat> there was basically two parts of the island. There was the English part because the very first um, the very first telephone cable from America came through Valencia, so the English engineers built a town, and then there was the Irish town, and the English town is where all the tourists go to, and it was packed out, and typically the Irish town was absolutely dead, ghost town. And uh, the pub that we were, or the hotel we were playing in was actually closing down. I was the last, last person to play there. And uh, we met this character. <laughs> yeah, it closed down because of me. <laughs> uh, I was that bad. And this place is closing down too. <laughs> Starting to become a coincidence. If anyone knows a bar that's going closing down, send me a message. <laughs> but uh, we met this character out there. And he was a very stubborn character. But he was telling us about how Chapel Town no longer even has a chapel and that there's nothing there. But he was saying that he couldn't care less. If everyone leaves, he'll still be the last person there and he'll struggle on and struggle away no matter what. And uh, I think that's definitely kind of a good frame of mind to have in independent music because it's definitely a struggle, but it's definitely worth it. And uh, I wrote this song about it. It's called You Are a Lighthouse. Usually I get people to sing along, but I don't know, you don't have any drink in you. What do you think? Do you think you'd be able for it? Yeah. Very mixed reactions. <laughs> we'll try it, we'll try the very first group of Irish people to sing along to a song sober. <laughs> Making history here. <laughs> Um, if you wouldn't mind singing along, that would be great because I had a couple of friends who said they were going to join me for a big finale, but they all backed out. So, not looking at anyone in particular. Um, I want to thank, I really want to thank everybody for coming out. It's just unbelievable to, for everyone to come and just and come and support me because when you're out playing on your own, it's it's definitely difficult and it's, it's a lonely slog and to have all my friends, family and new friends here, it honestly means the absolute world. I want to thank Mike Gavin who recorded all of the songs and Oscar Hackett who did all of the beautiful graphic design work here. The whole thing literally wouldn't have happened without him and I kind of joke saying it's a one man band but when you're on your own, you really rely on everybody so much more than a full band so I'd like to give I'd like for you to give those two guys a round of applause. I want to thank the Stormy Teacup as well for having me. Um, we have um, this picture book CD of the whole experience that's down at the back um, if you're interested in it. And I'm allowed to say it because I didn't do the graphic design work on it, but they look, they look class. Not sure how they sound, that's up to yourself, but at least they look really good. Okay, cool. We'll try a sing song at the end of it so we can all leave together unified. Uh, ready to take on the world. Uh, so the chorus goes. We will struggle. Everyone is gone. Do you have it? 
I know almost all of you by name, so if you don't sing along, I'm going calling you all out individually, so you may as well just join in. So uh, thank you very much. This song is called You Are a Lighthouse, and thanks. My name is Marty. This has been Anna's Anchor. Strong. 